Hello, hi, and welcome to episode number 25 of An Italian Knitted Podcast. My name is Francesca. I am an Italian knitter. I live in the northeast of Italy with my husband, our daughter, and our cat. I'm a software engineer. I work from home. And today, like every single one of my podcast episodes, I will go through my finished objects, works in progress acquisitions. However, I also have a little story time or just kind of me telling you about the yarn crawl, yarn festival that I went to a couple of weeks ago, which was very fun. I taught a workshop there and yeah, it was just very, very fun. And I'm also going to share with you today a little pattern that I just published. I just made it live on Ravelry as available for download a couple of minutes ago. So it's very, I don't know, it's very fresh. I feel the, the rush of adrenaline and yeah, it'll be very easy for me to show you and talk about the pattern because my first finished object is indeed a sample for that pattern. So let's go. Ooh. I should tell you though what I'm wearing. So I don't have any finished object that I can actually wear as a garment. So today I have to kind of dig in there in my handmade knitted garment box storage, let's say. And I pulled from there this Monday sweater by Petite Knit. This is actually a pretty fitted, fitted is the right word though? maybe like a cropped kind of garment for my preference. The sleeves, even if I pull them down, are like bracelet length. Um, and the fact that it's cropped and kind of has shorter sleeves made it, I think, very suitable for fall, autumn. I don't know if I would wear this in like full winter. Mm, I don't think you can tell, but it doesn't cover my entire like but like it's not a long sweater the ones that you actually just want to kind of wrap around and like be cozy in in the middle of winter i think this is like on the shorter side for me in terms of garments and so i think good for fall autumn that kind of type of mid-season not it's not mid-season it's a season but it's like before winter that's what i meant so monday sweater it has a folded collar and I think it has um, either like a two or three stitch raglan. But other than that, it's a pretty basic as in like simple looking clean raglan construction. And so not, not, not super special, but I do like it. I had to re-knit this um, because the first time that I did so, my yoke was like super deep and didn't feel comfortable. So I actually had to kind of front back and shorten the yoke so the depth here and finish it up so I do remember that the knitting process was my favorite because I do not enjoy when I have to front back but who does so I guess I'm a human I'm a regular knitter and the yarn is lovely so soft this is nocciole it's a yarn that's pretty local to me as in like the area that I live in and it is very soft and I'm about to acquire another sweater quantity I think in the future I don't I didn't order or I don't have anything to show you I'm just thinking like mental note that I would like to order more they also have a blue electric blue color that I like um, a pumpkin orange color as well so anyway back to that pattern that I published and then I have a sample of to show you. So this little circle of squishy goodness is the an Italian autumn cowl. And it's meant for you to wear wrapped twice around your neck. Let me demonstrate. I mean, it's nothing mind blowing, but I can model for you. So. This is the cowl. It is very, very squishy. It is wrapped twice. So you really feel enveloped in warmth and kind of, I don't know, you can kind of rest your head and take a nap almost. So the main features here are the features that I already included in another pattern that I published, which is that 
summer scarf and we're talking about removing this so that I can show you better. So we're talking about garter stitch, eyelets, and a built-in eye cord edge that you don't have to pick up at the end or anything that you just knitted while knitting the rest of the project. And the construction is, I think, very simple, as in you cast on, knit flat until you're happy with the length and this should be a length that allows you to wrap the cowl twice around yourself and once you're done you will go ahead and create this little seam in the middle here so I in the pattern described my preferred method which is to have your live stitches on your needle and then you pick up the stitches from the cast on edge while also binding off so that you do the seam or the grafting however we want to call this in one go so pick up a stitch from the cast on edge and bind off and so you do just one pass that's what i'm trying to say and i did film a little video tutorial for this specific step that i included in the pattern and for the tutorial what I'm showing is this little itty bitty mini autumn cowl just so that the tutorial wouldn't last 300 million years and so that you would like just see a little thing and still understand how to work that grafting. So this is an option for you. Of course, you can go ahead and create a circle the way you want. You could also, for example, just bind off and then seam together with mattress stitch or you could even, instead of cast on at the beginning with the regular long tail cast on, you could also have those stitches on a provisional cast on so that maybe it's easier to graft them together at the end. But anyway, in the pattern I just gave you my preferred method, but you do you. And bottom line is that you create a circle like so. I don't know. I don't think I don't think you would want to wear it as a headscarf. However, I already did it once. Did wear this as a kind of headscarf moment and it was just in this way. <laughs> I don't know. I was biking and it was very kind of um, freezing here around my ears and I did not have a hat so this kind of doubled as a multifunctional piece yeah and for this specific sample I used Filcolana Arveta held double so this is a fingering weight yarn held double to kind of achieve a DK weight gauge and you can do the same as I did if, especially if you have something in stash that works for this or you can just use one strand of DK weight yarn and call it a day. Yeah, so if you decide to give this pattern a go, I hope you like it. I think this is actually easier than the scarf pattern that I published before because this does not have any increases or decreases. The width of the cowl is the same throughout the entire cowl, so you don't need to kind of do any shaping. And so you like it's just very easy to work while you're watching TV or watching someone else, like a child, or I don't know, you need to pay attention to someone else or something else at the same time. I would really recommend it. Okay, one last moment and then I'll remove it because it's not quite that like cold yet for me to wear a sweater and a double wrap cowl inside the house. That's it. And it goes without saying, but if you want a cowl that, that feels less full and less enveloping, you can also reduce the width so that it, it doesn't actually like create such a chunky and cozy cowl. You can kind of reduce the, the width, cast on less stitches 
and go about it that way. You could also make it into a cowl that wraps around your neck only once. So just like what single wrap cowl. So just make the, the length shorter and instead of getting to a cowl that can be wrapped twice around your neck. You do you, this is your pattern now. As in like, you can do as you please. And the Filcolana Arveta that I used is a sock yarn. So I don't know, it's very squishy and soft. And I think this is very good to place like around sensitive area, like your neck, your face, your chest. And so I would recommend, I think, I, I guess for myself, I will always pick like a very soft yarn to go near my neck versus like something that's very rustic but you know yourself so you do you you can pick a different type of yarn a different softness something more rustic if you think you will enjoy that around your neck but yeah for myself i went with a very soft and squishy fabric my second finished object is a hat I haven't made a hat in the longest time. I think for myself, I only made one in my life. Is it true? I think so. So I wanted to try to make some, at least one, which is what I have so far. But I think this gave me the confidence and the enthusiasm to knit more because this was like fairly like quick project. It's small and it's very useful. <laughs> you always need more hats, more accessory. Um, in the winter time, so I don't know why I never really prioritized knitted hats, but now I want to. So anyway, this is the lovely ribbed hat by Pearl Soho. It's a free pattern, and I knitted it up in a cashmere, recycled cashmere by Campolmi Filati, which is a yarn brand in Florence, in Italy. So fairly local as in like it's an Italian brand and it is a lovely ribbed hat <laughs> that's exactly the name of the pattern so let me try again it's a beautiful ribbed pattern as in it's very squishy but it also looks very polished although it has a little bit of a white fluff and you knit this from the edge here upward and you do the decreases so it's just like your standard hat construction and i folded it like this kind of randomly i didn't measure or anything and this fits me very well so um in the end i did the medium size so like the, the size in the middle not the largest Although I did lengthen the height of the hat by maybe half an inch or so before doing the decreases, just because I thought that the pictures on the Pro Soho website, they made it seem like the hat was very fitted on top of your head and I wanted a little extra room and I think I did a very good job, if I do say so myself, so. Like it's not, like it doesn't, it's not squished on top of my crown. It has a little bit of room, which I think I like. Again, I don't have a lot of experience in knitting and wearing hats. So I don't know if I have a preferred hat look, but I think now this is my current preferred hat look. And I need to explore a little more and knit some more hats to understand if I do like this extra room, if I don't like, maybe, I don't know. If I like a thicker brim or thinner brim, or I don't know, you get the gist. But yeah, I would recommend this pattern. The thing that I didn't like almost at all was the actual knitting experience of knitting two by two ribbing throughout an entire project. Like my wrist was very sore after a few rows. So you do like knit, knit, pearl, pearl, knit, knit, pearl, pearl forever. So I can easily do it if it's a cuff, if it's a collar, if it's just like a little ribbing edge around a project, but like for the entirety, for the entirety, 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 entire project, 
it was a lot of work like it seemed like it never finished although it took me like i don't know a few days a couple of weeks maybe but i had to take breaks so it wasn't super enjoyable it was very easy though to follow i did a german twisted cast on as my cast on instead of a long tail cast on because i realized that for two by two ribbing i do like this german twisted cast on i think that's now my preference and yeah the decreases i think look fairly good i don't know if you can see anything but just they're just decreases i don't have any opinion or strong opinion about decreases but i know people care so yeah this is my hat and these were the two finished objects for today. I think this hat, to kind of transition into in-progress projects, I think this hat will go well with my half and half triangles wrap. Triangles wrap. It is a free pattern by Pearl Soho, which you've seen many times before, either on my videos or other people's videos or Instagram or anything and it is a square like a fabric knitted fabric square and you have this diagonal cutting through and dividing up the fabric into colors and I like it I really like it I think blue might not be my color like I actually don't know the season and the, the skin tone science and i not don't think i care that much and but i just don't know if blue is my color as in like the color that i really want like gravitate towards whenever i pick something to wear but i love blue jeans i love electric blue i made an electric blue sweater quite recently which i'm loving so i don't know maybe i do like blue and I mean, it's not the same exact blue at all, but I feel like wearing this hat with this wrap shawl in blue shades would work very well. So I'm looking forward to finishing this up. It kind of looks almost finished, I think, if you look at it. However, I have a little bit at the top here so you're missing this part i need to finish it i think it'll take me another couple of weeks at least also because i'm not knitting on this very religiously i'm using this as my in the dark project when i don't have visibility maybe i'm knitting in the dark in my daughter's room and yeah so it's going quite slowly but it's very squishy i don't think I'll be casting on another half and half shawl in the near future after finishing this one because I want to move on to other garter stitch mindless projects and I'll um, mention that in the acquisition section but keep it in mind. Next up in the category of in progress things that I'm working on is can you guess what this is? This will be, it's a pattern that does not exist yet. It will be an Italian winter shawl. Sorry, I'm wrapping my needle around my finger and it was hurting a little bit. This doesn't exist yet. Like it's not a pattern yet, it's a draft. But I, once again, gutter stitch, knitted flat with eyelets, but make it into a triangle shawl shape and you will wear it or yes if you knit if you knit on it or like i will wear it this way as a triangle it's too short now i think to be a enjoyable shawl maybe i don't know and so you will wear it around your shoulders as a shawl I don't have a lot to say about this just because it's the same garden stitch and eyelets and built-in eye cord edge and you've seen this look before. I'm using Drops Air. This is the softest yarn. This is, I think, technically a uh, Aran weight. 
yarn. The recommended gauge is 17 stitches per 10 centimeters, which is, I think, a fairly like big gauge. So it's going by very quickly with this yarn. So this will be published by me in December and I will go ahead and cast on another sample when I finish this one and that one will be in this beautiful foresty green. I had originally bought this yarn to make a second sample of the Italian autumn cowl. However, I realized after looking at the suggested gauge on the label and after kind of holding the yarn and knitting a little sample that it'll be more appropriate for the winter shawl. Um, this is a kind of a, a bigger yarn, like a chunkier yarn, and I think it'll work very, very well for the shawl. And that's what I'll be using for a second sample. And this is truly my color. Like with the blue, I still don't know if I do gravitate towards blue and blue knitted accessories and knitted things, but with green, I do gravitate. Like, you've noticed this probably. I think I've used green in every single one of my videos. So, cool. In progress, Italian winter shawl coming to you in December. Very simple. To be fair, you could just knit this yourself without waiting for my pattern if you want to. Um, this is just garter stitch and you increase on one side to create like a slopey um, diagonal edge, I guess. <laughs> and yeah, eyelets. And knit until either you finish the yarn or you're happy with the size. And the last but not least work in progress is my field day jacket by Ozetta. And I've not done a lot of progress since you last saw me a couple of weeks ago, but I did kind of finish up a sleeve and then I left my stitches on hold because I want to block the garment before finishing it up because I think this sleeve is already long enough for my size or for the size of my arm and I fear that when once I block this it will stretch too much for my liking so I'll show you how long it is for now. It is fairly long for my tastes. So I, this is the length that I would want the sleeve to be after blocking. So I'm pretty sure that blocking this will result in a longer sleeve than I would actually like. So I just put things on hold for now. I will knit the second sleeve and then block it and then see how I feel. Uh, this is a very oversized jacket style cardigan. That's the intent of the pattern. It's actually called Feel Day Jacket, not Feel Day Cardigan. So it is meant to be very oversized and comfortable. My, my goal is to wear this on top of another sweater or something underneath, like a cardigan, so that it's. I'm very happy with the positive ease here, like around my arm and around my chest area. So all good there. I just, I don't want it to be super long in terms of sleeves because otherwise I cannot use my hands efficiently, right? Like if I need to do something in the backyard or like I, I put this on to go and do some other things outside, then I need to be able to use my hands in, instead of like having a sleeve that covers up until my fingertips. So I'll block it and make a decision afterward. I hope to finish this quite soon. It has been on my needles for many months because I took like a break in the summertime and I didn't want to knit on very like heavy wool. This is Cascade 220 non superwash, by the way, so it's pretty like warm wool. So in July and August, this was very far away from my knitting desires. Didn't want to touch it. So I just picked it, picked it up again a couple of weeks ago and I'm trying to finish it up. The body will become quite like long. I want it to kind of cover my butt and be yeah, like a jacket, like a full on kind of coat situation. And also because I do have enough yarn to do so. So I can kind of 
Once I finish the sleeves, I can move on and knit the body how long. The, the yarn that I have left allows me to go. And that's it. What should I put on for you? I will put on the cowl again, <laughs> like so. We're gonna have it this way because the <laughs> Monday sweater is too warm and I think this is a good compromise, so let me do this. And I did mention acquisitions before and also the fact that I did not want to make another half and half wrap anytime soon. And so I'm gonna show you, I guess I'm gonna mention what I'd like to knit on as my garter stitch mindless project or I don't know how mindless it'll be but garter for sure and it will be a sweet shop blanket I think everyone has been knitting one of these or casting on or has the plan to knit a sweet shop blanket this is by Laura Penrose and the blanket is made up with a main collar that kind of covers half of the blanket so the squares that make up the blanket are 50% the main color and 50% another like random or arbitrary or fun or whatever you want like color. It could be a mini skin or leftover yarn. So for my main color, I had this Filcolana Mercy in my stash and I went to my local yarn store and tried to find something very close to this that I could hold double. So the blanket is fingering with yarn held double or just one strand of DK. So I'm picking the fingering held double route. So this is one strand and the other strand will be Drops Flora. And I think I did a pretty good match in here. I mean, it doesn't matter too, too, too much. Even if it gives a little bit of a marled look to the blanket, I'm okay with that, but I think I did a a good job matching these colors and so the main color for me will be one strand of flora and one strand of the mercy and for the rest of the fun mini skeins of leftover yarn the, the colors of the actual squares i have some leftover in stash as you can imagine and i'm also going to be receiving a yarn advent calendar from a fellow knitter and we're part of the Crea Bea's scrappy advent calendar swap that she's organizing this year and me and my partner will put together advent calendars with our own leftover scrap yarn and sending that to each other in the post. We picked the 12 mini skein version. I don't have enough leftovers to make a 24 day advent calendar for someone else. I don't have 24 mini bowls left over. I can make a 12 days advent calendar, so I will do that. And I think I will do that either today or tomorrow. And while I put together the advent calendar for the other person, for my partner in this exchange, I think I'll also prep some little leftover bowls of yarn for myself to use in the blanket that I can just pick from whenever I do want to make one of these square for the sweet shop blanket. Yeah, and uh, I was mentioning like a garden stitch mindless project. However, I'm not actually sure how mindless this blanket will be because you do need to build these squares who are like 50% one color, 50% the other color. They have short rows in the constructions and they have short rows in the construction and you do need to pick up stitches along the edge of the square to start a new square. So maybe it won't be mindless at all. We will find out. Fingers crossed that it is somewhat mindless or maybe besides the picking up stitches, maybe the actual construction of the square is mindless. If you've started knitting this blanket, please let me know. So that at least I'm aware. Last thing that I want to mention today is that I went a couple weeks ago to the Bologna Yarn Crawl or Yarn Festival. Bologna is a city very close to me. I can get there by train half an hour, so it's very, very convenient. So I went there and I actually met with Alex. She has a podcast here. She was visiting from Australia 
and she was in Bologna for that day and it was so 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 lovely to meet her in person it was also her birthday that day and we met for lunch at a little I guess not little at a knitting cafe and we just chatted and had lunch and from there we went to the Wool Dan yarn store in Bologna and the owner of the store is actually the person that organizes the Bologna yarn crawl and we just basked in the yarn. Alex, I think, did purchase a few a few things. I kind of just looked around. The owner, Julia, gifted me a little, like, kind of flexi. Is it called flexi? No, it's called flox. But it's, it's a flexible cable needle. I don't know if you can see anything. And you can put your stitches on hold on this little bendy part when you want to kind of make, maybe do cables or if you just want to put stitches on hold but I guess this is meant for cabling like for to knit cables and I side note here I don't think I'm ready to do a cabled sweater I don't think but I think I'm ready to do a cabled hat I'm actually not sure but I think that's why I said I'm, I think I'm ready so anyway I think I'll be putting this to good use in a hat soon. And after the visit to the wool dance store, I moved forward. I went to teach my works. I went to teach my workshop, and it was about reading patterns that are written in English. And I also taught how to make my Italian summer scarf. We casted on that together with the participants of the workshop, and I think everyone had a very lovely time. We also stayed for happy hour, we had drinks and snacks and just it's always so lovely to be near other knitters and have fun together and just work a little on our projects and chat and drink and eat. I don't know. It's so special. I don't do that as often, so I really try to appreciate it when I do that. And then it was time for me to come back home took my train and the day was over. If you're ever in Bologna, in Italy or nearby, I would 100% recommend stopping by Well Done, which is the yarn store that I just mentioned, and kind of just look around. They have yarn that is not, I think, commonly available in other yarn stores around me or in Italy at all. They have Manchalopi, the kind of unspun yarn, they have nocciole, which is the yarn that I used for my very soft green Monday sweater. And um, they have mota, which is a fairly rustic, or at least rustic for my taste, yarn, which I used to make um, Italian summer scarf, which is not a summer scarf. Like in the end, it's made with wool. And Julia, the owner, also hosts other than this yarn crawl type events, also knitting retreats. So you actually go with her in like a lovely chalet in the mountains and do some hiking and knitting and good food. So I don't know, I, I want to put one of these retreats in my calendar for the winter months or maybe in the spring because that always kind of recharges my knitting mojo and just kind of my, my happiness. And I think that'll be it for today. From me and my currently single wrap cowl. <laughs> okay, giving you one final look at the double wrapped cowl. Um, and I'm gonna see you next time. And I hope you have a good day, good rest of your week, good month, anything. Bye friends.